الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين والصلاة والسلام على الرسول الكريم وبعد going to go straight into it inshallah uh, the brother Abu Taymiyyah Muhammad Jailani he released a video recently where he addressed me therein and brought up a scenario relating to myself however when doing so he didn't give that scenario its due context and what it was needed to be mentioned with so as a result it caused confusion so I reached out to the brother in private uh, telling him that you stripped the scenario out of context and it was required that you mention prior incidents to leading to where it is, stands so people could understand things as they deserve to be understood inshallah and that or else it would be a form of talbis allah says wala talbisul haqq bil batil wa taktumul haqq wa antum ta'lamun do not mix truth with falsehood and conceal the truth while you know so sometimes when a person knows that he is going to deceive a people and confuse them through a particular narrative that they're pushing and conceal important factors that are needed to be mentioned with it this becomes impermissible this becomes impermissible so the brother responded and after me telling him that if you don't remove this part from the video it's caused a confusion I have no other choice except to clarify publicly and the brother confirmed with a message generally showing that he is persistent upon it so I wanted to clarify inshallah that the brother from time to time has addressed me publicly or in some clips of his and mentioned me from one time to another and I believe all of that context needs to be brought in light regarding what he brought up recently in his video so the people could see things as they are and give them their right and fair ruling inshallah so I'll play the video uh, the part that he mentioned and for the full content you can return back to his YouTube channel for these audios inshallah for most of them and those that are not then I'll play the full clip inshallah but the point that he's trying to make is you have the enemies of Islam who normally come after you but these brothers are actually what doing it for them so. and here he's referring to me uh, and I don't know who else, but for perhaps other brothers from the UK, uh, the brothers that studied along with them, along with uh, the brothers that studied along with him, here mentioning that we are like doing things for the enemies of Islam. When perhaps advising him or ad- telling him what he's doing of certain controversy is perhaps wrong because the brother Abu Taymiyyah uh, for those who know him and on a personal level he's very controversial and reckless at times he needs guidance and when he came to Yemen uh, from the Sufi camp uh, from Hadramaw to Damaj and we as the brothers there, we took him under our wing, we guided him, clarified a lot of misconceptions he had. And alhamdulillah, I think at that time he was appreciative. And we showed him so much, we helped him and his learnings when he was new. And we were patient with him, even though he was argumentative. And he had a lot to turn there and he would waste his time a lot on certain things of just going on Facebook with back and forth, we would advise him. And with that, he would still uh, have these remnants, but alhamdulillah, with advice. But from that time 
till now we were been continuous with Nusiha. So he's giving us now the example and the parable of people doing work for the enemies of Islam when advising him. And it's unfortunate. And I'll give you examples of how sometimes reckless Abu Taymiyyah may be that he needs advice. He needs to be directed because sometimes he says things uh, that could cause more harm. And I'll give you an example of recently when he came here to Toronto. I'll play the clip, inshallah, where he said something about a Muslim rapper. Think about these rappers. What was that rapper called that you guys told me about earlier? Top five. Top five. Right? <laughs> we know the ins and the outs of their lives. Where they are, how they live their life, and whatever have you. These are non-Muslims, my brothers and my sisters. So, yes, alhamdulillah, after people contacted him and mentioning him, he uh, apologized and took this back. And it just shows that the brother at times can be reckless and he needs guidance from other students of knowledge. Here, referring to and it's someone that little does he know about, which is perhaps told as a non-Muslim. Okay, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Maybe uh, he didn't know, or it was a slip of the tongue. But just that context to know him, like referring to someone on public, as a public platform, someone of that known, in that manner, in that light, while not knowing so much as a da'i, could bring more harm than good. In fact, some people came to my office in the masjid here, Istiqama, uh, furious about it. And he was still in the city, Abu Taymiyyah. Who knows if the, some of these individuals were to act foolish and seek revenge for that rapper and harm Abu Taymiyyah, more harm would have came. So advice from fellow students of knowledge is needed at times. It doesn't mean that they're always stepping in front of you and preventing you from doing khair and working with the enemies of Islam. We're just there as advisors to one another. Adino nasiha. So don't always take your brother's advice as someone working with the enemies of Islam. So that's one point, inshallah, that we need to bear in mind. Subhanallah. I go to Canada, right? A brother, a brother, that used to be close to me when I was in Yemen. I haven't spoken to him maybe for the last three years, right? He finds out that I arrived. Right? Instead of maybe welcoming me, you know, he's our brother, let's maybe have a discussion with him. I get a clip from this individual. I haven't spoken to him for maybe the last three years. No salam and no kalam. Right? This video of one of the mashayikh, right? It's one minute long. If you see someone that everyone loves, then know that he's someone that is watering down or he's compromising his religion. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allahu Akbar. With all of the enemies of Islam who are after me, who are causing me problems left, right, and center. Right? Trying their utmost best to shut down my programs. Huh? Mudahin. I'm someone who comes. Tayyib, so here I wanted to point out something that this is the part where he didn't really give you guys the background information that was needed. He just threw something out in the air. And whoever hears it, they may assume something else. But the brother Abu Taymiyyah, uh, when he came back uh, to the West, uh, he was someone that would seek guidance and advice from us. And in fact, I was traveling to the, U in the UK. Uh, he came to my lecture at Masjid Al-Muqbil and attended and he spent the night with me in one of the places I was staying. And we went to da'wah together. And during the ride, he was asking me about certain topics. And I gave him advice and clarified. And with all that, we were in a state of dino nasiha, religion, sincere advice. And when it reached to a level where the brother was doing certain things wrong 
Yani after meeting a person, I would contact him and advise him about these things and other people as well in terms of da'wah. So he responded uh, in a harsh manner, uh, even wordings like, Allahu lisana, may Allah cut off the tongue, the one who says this and that. And Putman audios that he would share, and he was referring to us generally. And it reached a level where he started to speak about me and others. And as a result, he was removed from some of the WhatsApp groups. And the brother persisted in defending certain things that we were advising him about. Nonetheless, we left it as it is uh, for a time period. So I want to give you further that how Abu Taymiyyah were not sharing full information of what is needed. And if people so I'll give you an example of Abu Taymiyyah prior, how he would say things about me publicly or do certain things, and then expects for me to welcome him and give him the biggest hug when he comes to Toronto. So I'll just play for you uh, something of that sort, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, it's kind of going rife, uh, spreading like wildfire, you know. Uh, what actually is happening to Abu Fajr? We've got Canadians who are in the jami'ah who are telling one another because of shock that they may have due to obviously some of the views and the stances that Abu Fajr had in the past and also the kind of harb. Uh, he done towards me in regards to this issue specifically of supposedly going to the masajid of Ahl Bida that I apparently okay and uh, and apparently now he's the Imam of Khalid bin Walid which is a well known i'tisami masjid alladhi la yakhtalifu fi itnan and the fact that Abu Aisha Yaseen is doing tahdeer of him yaqul annahu kada wa kada wa kada and uh, so this is an example of just how he may have spread misinformation and false rumors about me that you know, I was hurt when he done so and even like if I were to wanted to I could have responded publicly or responded and said get something publicly from officially from these brothers or from this masjid like from brother Yasin Abu Aisha that he doesn't warn from me and could have clarified that you're not truthful in your claims or what you relay or I could got from Khalib and Walid an official statement they would even say this that I am not the Imam, and I wasn't the Imam. And in fact, you're the one that went to their masjid and praised them uh, and its people. And if, so if you're going to uh, and you speak about me in that light, then you should address yourself. You should address yourself. So even with this, I contacted him privately about this particular and I'll play what how he respond and some of just for so people can see the uh, original context because it's needed. for all the messages that you send me. Abu Fajr, man. Abu Fajr. Allah Hadina wa Yak. I'm, 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 so, Allah, I'm actually shocked akhi, that you're saying to me I've wronged you. Akhi. I'm honestly, Allah, in shock. Absolute shock. So you can see lack of accountability and reality. And even suppose I wronged you in something else. And you could have at least admitted that what you relayed and shared to others was not true. And it became clear to you that it was not true. 
and you could have caused friction between loved ones with your speech or confusion about the particular day where he is and how he operates himself. This is needed. Another thing too that he did uh, in another clip of his when he was referring to me publicly. You see. Scared to hide his beliefs and what his position is. Uh, and I've come previously spoken about my own brothers who attacked certain mashayikh like Sheikh Falah. So here he said, my own brothers that attacked Sheikh Falah. So what he's referring to is an article that I translated of certain criticism of other scholars and mashayikh regarding certain verdicts and statements by Sheikh Farah Ismail, rahimahullah. So as we know, as a student of knowledge, he has the right to share criticism of another scholar uh, in light that he's clarifying the mistake of the other scholar, as long as it's done with knowledge and his proofs and his evidences. So instead of attacking those mashayikh or responding to them, he comes and attacks me. And he writes two PDFs by name refuting me. And this is what he's referring to. Sheikh Falah, there was a brother, my Qareen, a brother who studied in the at the same time as me, uh, Zamini, who said things about Sheikh Falah, even though Sheikh Falah is not my teacher, I would come up and I defend him. I'm not. So what he means of defending, he just shared a praise, a general praise, but he didn't actually address the error. So he could have said, this is an error, and Jazakumullah khairan, these mashayikh were right. There's no one except that he could be corrected and even responded to. And we know that, that there's a book of this past, for example, Bayan Khata Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, Fi Tarikhi. Abu, يعني, Abu Hatim and Abu Zura'a يعني, clarifying a mistake of Imam Bukhari in his book of history of hadith of the, of the tarikh that he wrote of history and it was reported this reputation by his son Ibn, uh, Ibn Abi Hatim the son of Abu Hatim so showing you that scholars may publicly respond to each other of criticism and verdicts, and that there's no one greater than that. There's no one bigger uh, than the truth. And as Imam Malik says, there's no one from us except they can be refuted. And you yourself mentioned this about the topic of refutation. Hard. In some cases it becomes hard. So maybe speak the truth in front of your loved ones and those people who are close with you. So this is something that I wanted to clarify. That refutations, clarifying the doubts is something that is praiseworthy in our religion. We shouldn't look at it as, okay, this guy keeps doing it and that guy keeps doing it. Rather, it is a wajib that has been taken off our necks. Because some people have gone and established it. Also, Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, he said, and Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala quoted this. إِذَا سَكَتُّ أَنَا وَسَكَتْ أَنْتْ مَتَى يُعْرَفُ الْجَاهِلُ الصَّحِيحِ مِنَ الصَّقِيمِ If I'm quiet and you're quiet as well, how are the people going to differentiate between the ignorant individual and also the one who's upon clarity, the one that's upon goodness? If everyone decides to keep quiet now, how are the people going to know? So it was observation made by some mashayikh of certain things, of statements, of verdicts, that those shiuch seen that more harm could have come out of those verdicts. And it was statements of audio that was made by Sheikh Falah Ismail, may Allah have mercy upon him, and may Allah pardon him. But it was clarification. If he seen that clarification be wrong, he should have responded to the clarification. Instead of uh, attacking uh, me as a person, Merely because I initially advised, and this was my parent, like he ran with it. He could have contacted me, Abu Taymiyyah, and said, what's your point of view of why you're sharing this? We could have advised me. But he ran with it and made two PDFs on me by name refuted me. 
so alhamdulillah, in response, I just responded with sharing the observations of those mashayikh with the audio references, and I left it general like that. Alhamdulillah, people seen that. It was academic, it was knowledge-based. No one is lying on anyone. So that was how what happened. And no recantation, no retraction from Abu Taymiyyah, no correction on how he should have dealt with it. All of that was left out the window. Tayyib, I'll give you another example. And, uh, Ikhwan, another thing I forgot to mention, and uh, I think it's vital and crucial that I make you aware of this. Just the other day, I was telling this to Sheikh Abdul Hamid Al Hajuri. Sheikh Abdul Hamid Al Hajuri, he messaged me with a voice note saying, The brothers are complaining about you. They're saying that you're going to send a, or you're going to bring down a video on them on YouTube, or you've already put one on YouTube. And I thought, like, I sent a few messages to the Sheikh saying to him, Yeah, Sheikh, these guys, I don't see a difference between them and Abu Khadija. Wallahi. Escobs and them, Wallahi, he used to tell Sheikh Abu Osama back in the day when he used to say to me that the match is one side of the coin and you got Escobs on the other side of the coin. And I used to say to him, Akhir, don't even, you know, don't uh, uh, put the, uh, don't, don't put the Mashaykh in there as well. And then he would say, and this shows, you know, his fadila, how quick he was to, you know, uh, you know, look at the haqq, Sheikh Abu Sama, and I really respected him for that. He goes, okay, khalas, I wouldn't say the mashayikh, but these guys. And I actually came to realize this, wallahi akhi, la farqa, bayna ha ulai wa ulaik. There's no difference between them guys and them guys. They are exactly the same, except sometimes that these damages, they have no hudud. They have no limits when it comes to speaking about other mashayikh. As for Asbab, they wait for Muhammad bin Hadi to give them the go-ahead to stamp the authority and then for them to uh, start speaking about others as to what they done to Sheikh Ibrahim Ruhayli when he was coming two years ago. Now they got the go-ahead from him, they went ballistic. As for these guys, the amount of things they say, Wallahi, no hudud fi ba'd al and I told this Sheikh Abdul Hamid, I was like, these guys, they're no different. You got Abu Khadija who is their head, and you got Abu Fajr who's the other head, and you got all of these livestock who are blind following one another. Naam. And uh okay, that, that's why I think and that's wallahi I ana deen Allah bihi bihada. This why, you know, believe and I've seen it, and no one's gonna convince me they're not like that. Especially how they deal with all of us. So you can hear for yourself another example of how and he addresses me publicly or brings out my name. And this is to show like and we have no boundaries or limitation whatsoever he's saying in some of the things we say. And no boundaries at all. And he, this is what you believe, Abba Tamiya? We have no hudud whatsoever. This is unjust. We're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nonetheless, this is the context of now that he's coming. And even with all of that, I still reached out to him when his brother was passing away, or he passed away, and I sent him condolences, reached out to him. After all, what he said and did, and warned from me or or said certain things to me about people to me on Umrah trips of uh, students that I've sent just beginner students I'm sending them to go learn Umrah or do certain things and they come back and tell me they encounter Abu Taymiyyah and he said this and that I said La hawla wa la quwata illa billah the Masakin students are just beginners and he's already speaking to you about these things so the brother, and despite what he would do, reached out some condolences for his brother who passed away. May Allah have mercy on him. And then Abu Taymiyyah, as I hear that he's coming, I thought, and it was incumbent, and it, for him to hear a particular advice of Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami when giving da'wah, that you don't compromise. No matter who you are, you can compromise in something. It doesn't mean you can compromise in everything. He resigned just to please everybody. You end up not saying what's needed. And that's what he did. When he came, there was 
some tabligis that he went to, some this people he went to and that people. There were certain things that he could have advised them uh, and it could have been, they could have, more khair would have came out uh, even if he were to address certain things publicly for their audience, more khair would have come out. But uh, unfortunately, he was uh, praising them as people who welcomed him and what are announcing whatever, allowing them to announce their programs and their classes at his talks. Or so I thought it was needed for him to just bear that in mind when coming. So he took this out of context and he mentioned like that I didn't welcome him. Of course I'm not going to welcome you like after all you did, brother. You expect a big welcome hug? After all this, you should be thankful that I'm still advising you with privately and messaging you on these things. So he would send in private uh, that he got this Instagram feed or in this message, someone comp- uh, thanking him for a lecture. So I said, Jazakum la khayran, kana da bihaja ila da'wa, walakin kullama kanat hadhi da'wa murtabita bi manhaj salaf, kanat abqa wa aqwa. Jazakum jazakum la khayr, kana da's in need of da'wa. But this da'wa, as long as it's more connected to the salafi manhaj, it becomes stronger and remains its effect. And I give him a tafsir of sa'adiya benefit, also, I'll give him another benefit. Uh, I told him, Husn al al wasin qad yakum sabu al iqtirar about the tafsir of Surah al jinn. And this is advice. Then about some kalam al khatabi, where he says, al aqil, al wajib al aqil, ala yaghtar bi kalam al awam wa thanaihim, wa la yathiq bi uhudihim wa ikhaihim, fa innahum yakbalun ma tama' wa yudbirun ma al ghina. ويطيرون مع كل نائق. There are some words that the scholars say you should not just listen to the awam and everything they say, and or you know take their praise or get deceived. This is advice. And he goes after all this, and then even with that, when he said you don't say you know welcoming and welcome to Canada, I told him أنا أخوكم المفقود الذي يدعو لك في ظهر الغيب. Allah is I told him, I'm your lost brother. That makes dua for you behind your back. And perhaps Allah may answer. This is what I was doing in private with him when he was coming. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, with these advices, Brother Adam al-Maghribi contacts me and says that he has a gift for me. And later on, I received that gift, and then Abu Taymiya sends me a message. He says, I hope you enjoy this and this perfume. Sometimes you need to slow down in life. Imam Abu Hanifa will send gifts uh, to those who wronged him. I hope you enjoy. This is, and after he wronged me, uh, even with all this, I responded by saying, Mela, pardon me if I ever wronged you. I never want to meet Allah while someone has a wrongdoing. They are pleading against me. Then I said, Just mention something on the side. You have wronged me in statements you have made against me. Let me just give you one example so you know that you are the one who needs to slow down in life. All cases, Jazakallah khairan for gifting me this gift that you were gifted from Ottawa. And he got a gift from someone else and he just gave it to me. So I said, Jazakallah khairan. But no accountability of what all this of incorrect behavior. And uh, I even told him of yani you could have at least confirmed before relaying it instead of passing it on or exactly so you don't wrong anyone. But I said, but what is the parent Allah knows best? You ran with it assuming you had something against me. Same thing you did when you wrote a PDF on me and nothing happened out of it because people see it is allowed for student knowledge to relay other scholars' observations about another person of the people of knowledge if needed at times, especially if errors are, are misleading. Then I, I said to him, you attacked me for my month of private advices to you back in the days on WhatsApp. And for my general clarifications, I even called you and you refused to speak over the phone about the issue. You took the fatawa of the scholars out of context. I returned to some of those same shiuch and their students to clarify that those fatawa have to be understood correctly. 
For that reason, you are, if you were to go to those scholars and ask them about what you do, they are obviously would disagree with you, Ya Khan of Muhammad, and you know that. And he was silent about that in reality. That point specifically, and in going to the way the massages of Ahl Bid'ah, yes, you can go, there's guidelines. But I told him the way, if you take the same mashiukh that you took there for Tawa generally and apply it to your situations, they would disagree with you. And we're ready to go to the mashayikh. And he knows that. And I told him, you know that. They would disagree. And I'm going to play a clip where he himself shared a clip on his recent video that even the same clip goes against what he's doing. And we're going to point that out, inshallah. So I mentioned to him, I remember you saying in my face in front of Masjid Quba, and I'll quote this as well in this context, inshallah, is going to come. So I said, you're not to blame anyone for any confusion you caused through your actions. People would obviously want to avoid promoting you until you be, bring clarity for that reason. Abu Muawiyah refuted you around those times because of the confusion you brought through your statements and actions. And he, I said, yes, he could, and he, perhaps later on, but this is around those times there was a confusion that happened. So I was speaking to him in this manner, in private, and with all that, he still uh, shares uh, that part of the situation without his context and misleads the uh, viewers and the listeners to assume there is no background information, it's just suddenly someone was in Yemen with him and then no welcome and just like a wash, like just all over him. So uh, that is what I wanted to share of context. Tayyip, another thing too in his new video is what how he uh, took out the real reason for his differences with some of the brothers from Hashimah Mukbil in the UK. We differed with our brothers. This is back in 2014 and it was brought up again by the Sheikh. Is the issue of going to the Masajid of Ahl Bid'ah. Right. I keep being told, stick to your brothers, stick to your brothers. What do they mean by this term when they say your brothers, your brothers? Meaning your Damaji brothers. This is what they would say to me all the time. And this is the same type of rhetoric that we hear right now. Are you with us? Are you with us? Are you with us? No, I'm not with you. Right? In fact, I'm actually very different. Right? What do they mean by this? Those who agree with, those who agree on matters... That are what? Far'iyat and juziyat. Subsidiary matters. And I'll give you just a background about this as well, uh, that it's not correct. Uh, and there's an old audio of Abu Mu'awi Abdullah Hassan where he points out some of the reasons of the fallout. Uh, inshallah, we'll play it here. So he's speaking about Ibn Hassan al-Ma'ribi, a masjid in Luton, how they dealt with Abu Hassan al-Ma'ribi. And then you go on to say, Ya Muhammad, that when it became clear, his mistakes became clear and his false principles, they left him off and they left him at that and they clarified his mistakes. And you also said, First, these brothers from Luton, their head or the one that's in charge and has authority of the message is a brother called Abdul Khadir Bakhsh. And these brothers, they do not promote Abu Hassan whatsoever. And they haven't done so for many years. Ya Muhammad, Ya Ustad, first you said that they clarified his mistakes and they left him at that. Where is this clarification, Akhi? We're yet to see it. And then you said that they stopped promoting him. Then Ya Muhammad, to make clear to you that those people who you've backed to the hill have misled you, Ya Akhi, and they've told you incorrect information. For if you was to only go to calltoislam.com and to have taken that time to look on their website and put in the search bar Abu Hassan, A-B-U-L-H-A-S-A-N, you would have found, as I found, three subheadings. The first one being 
on the manhaj and hizbiyya, the dangers of labeling people, Sheikh Abul Hassan al Maribi, created on the 14th of September 2013. And he wrote that, he didn't recant, he was persistent, and he, these people were promoting Abul Hassan al Maribi on their website. And he was saying all sorts of statements, harsh statements towards the brothers and ourselves, merely because we were telling a fact. We were telling a fact. And the one that says that they promote Abu al-Hasan at the very moment, فَهَذَا رَجُلٌ وَاللَّهِ يَكْذِبْ يُحَرِّشْ وَيُفْتِنُ وَيُرِيدُ إِشَاعَةِ الْبَاطِلِ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Look at all these statements. SubhanAllah. La ilaha illallah. You say that the one that says that they promote Abu al-Hasan at the very moment that he is, فَهَذَا رَجُلٌ وَاللَّهِ يَكْذِبْ then you take an oath by Allah that that person is a liar and is lying. Will you harish and he's setting people against one another? Will you fitin and he's causing fitna? Will you read Isha'at al Batil Bain al Nas and that he wants to spread falsehood and lies amongst the people? My intention, Ya Ikhwan, is not is not to embarrass anybody. But so uh, this is uh, some of the things. Uh, and there's more to it. But Abu Timur, he doesn't want to give you the full story, unfortunately. Uh, he's giving a biased narrative for some reason. I uh, ask Allah to guide us all. I'll give you another example. Other subsidiary matters that they differed on, subhanAllah. Tell me if I'm wrong, my brothers and my sisters. Over what? Right? I remember, subhanAllah, how I was personally dealt with. This is back in 2014. I came back, all I knew was our Damaji brothers. And it was only their message I would give khutbah at, and one of the other messages in Leicester. Later on, we fell out over what? Over three things, right? Number one, you shouldn't cooperate or you shouldn't uh, have dealings with Abu Usama al Dahabi. I just went to see him. I was being told by a couple of brothers, it's good maybe we go see the Sheikh because I was teaching in Nottingham in a masjid, right? And the attendees, they were split between those who like Sheikh Abu Sama Dhabi and those who hate him. So of course, like I can't speak about someone that I have no knowledge of, right? People are telling me you need to speak about him, uh, you need to refute him, you need to refute Green Lane. And I never said anything. One of the brothers, who's now become a little bit... Uh, narrow-minded, or in fact, extremely narrow-minded, uh, he actually drove me to the sheikh. Right? And this same brother now, who drove me to the sheikh, considers me and Sheikh Abu Sama to be watered down, to be completely up. And did you ever cross your mind, Abu Taymiya, that for some people that were with you, all of a sudden leaving you off, or someone else of your teachers, do you ever try to think that not everyone's wrong or everybody has... Maybe they have a good reason. Do you ever try to stop brushing everyone with the same brush and try to hear them out for once? Completely off. On his own account. Ajib. How the days and the nights... They alternate, right? And I just verified all of this information that was being said about Sheikh Abu Sama. So anyways, because I didn't call him an innovator, I got threatened by some of these brothers. I got threatened by some of these. Either you get clear on Abu Sama, you got 48 hours, 48 hours to get clear. Otherwise, we're taking all of your lessons down from a website they had at the time called al Ulum. And that's exactly what they ended up doing. The other issue that they had... So he goes on to mention another issue, but uh, let's see this part yani, about the Abu Sama Zahabi part because I brought it to him and I reminded him I said I remember you saying in my face in front of Masjid Quba that you will leave off Abu Sama Zahabi if you hear this and that statement this is what he's saying to there was even some brothers from Leicester he didn't initially I didn't request him but this is what he ended up saying with those brothers at that time so he says if he, if he admitted hearing it from him, he will somewhat agree not to uh, 
go to him or take from him or even uh, praise him. So I asked him, is this true, Abu Taymiyyah, that you agreed to this and you heard this from him? He said, yes. I said, so you're not going to go back to him? He said, yes. So it was on his own agreement. And then he ended up going back to him without any clarification. So uh, the issue of Abu uh, Sam al-Zahabi was initially something that he brought up that if he hears, he said, I think he said if he hears this from him directly, he's going to leave him off. And he said he heard him directly. And, he, and at that, in front of Masjid Quba, the last chapter night, I gave a lecture. And uh, it was arranged by Abu Taymi and them. And they welcomed me. They brought me there. So I was there in front of some of other brothers from Leicester who were present at that time. And they were bringing these points up that he said this. And he heard it. So can you follow your own word? So this was the context. Or else, uh, with him still uh, being Abu Samad Dhabi, there was a lot of brothers who he studied with from Damaj that were still uh, giving him the good side and patience and even with these weird behavior. They didn't say give him this thing that you have to or else you'll be cut off. And he knows that. And he used to refer to these individuals as neutral. And now he refers to them perhaps as extreme. What happened... And anyone that disagrees with him uh, in just some of his behavior, what he does, he labels them and attacks them. And then he later on, he says that if we, if we were to, and because he was at attacking us on WhatsApp groups, and the people, the admin of the WhatsApp groups removed him. Because he was argumentative, he was causing uh, drama in the WhatsApp groups. And the same thing for the ulum, uh, that someone who like this, who's argumentative and causing problems, it's not safe to have him on such a platform that he's going to bring, his name is going to bring controversy until things calm down. And that was a wise decision. And alhamdulillah, we did so because later on, a lot of reckless behavior came out by you and it couldn't harm the image of the website. So this is uh, our opportunity to share this because uh, the background, because you withheld this information, unfortunately. The thing about going to the Masajid of Ahlul Bid'ah, the brother Abu Taymiyyah in his recent video, uh, I believe in the two hour and 40 minute span, he shared a clip of one of the Mashayikh, which is actually something that I went against some of the things that he was doing. And he thought it was in his favor. So I'll play the audio. So this is the part where he says, as for something specific for them, specific platform or specific organization, you're going to go to uh, participate with them, then don't do so. Don't do so. So you can see that the the, lobby, the guidelines he gives. Except in a manner that you're clarifying and you're criti critiquing their errors. <laughs> Sorry, so the quality. Uh, and he says, as for them, is taksiruna bik. And they're calling you and they're using you to increase their numbers and promote themselves. And the Sheikh said, No, you sh they shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. So there's guidelines, Abu Taymi, and you know that you're going against this when you go to Ahl Bid'ah. A lot of the times, this is not meant. That's why your brothers were advising you. And they're pointing this out. But you attack them and you label them extreme for these type of things. And this is the same advice that you're sharing now, but you missed these parts. And you took the parts that was in your favor, but you missed the one of the most important factors that he's pointing out. Taib, here another thing in this recent video, he misquoted Sheikh Abdul Hamid. I don't know if it's purposely or ignorantly, I and mean, this is a very bad misquote, we'll play it. 
second point that the Sheikh mentioned second point that the Sheikh mentioned was oh because apparently I said that it's okay to debate with the people of innovation I don't know where he got that from so before that, the first point was the Sheikh mentioning bed and he started uh, with the fear of taswir picture taking and the Sheikh wasn't mentioned like this he just mentioned that at the beginning because for anyone who knows, we're going to play Abu Taymiyyah's previous stance about picture-taking. Uh, but there is a category of people that you could really critique harshly, as Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Barraq mentions, uh, when he's speaking about the stance of Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Taymiyyah, where he mentions Ashab al-Ahwa, the people of desires. And he says, فَلَا يُغْنِيهِمْ أَتَّحَقُّكْ مِنْ مَذْهَبِ الْعَالِمُ فَتْوَى بل يكفيهم أن يظفروا منه ما يوافق مرادهم ويصلح التشبث به لترويج باطلهم. So some of these people, you mentioned, they're not really concerned about the scholar, what he actually came to a conclusion. It's just taking a concession of a scholar and using it as a proof and slapping on people's faces with it. And these type of people are, he says, the people of desires regarding this topic. So he said, بناء على ما تقدم يتبين أن لا يصح اطلاق نسبة القول بجواز التصوير بالكاميرا إلى الشيخ فمن يقال عنه في ذلك روايتان ويقال إن قوله بالجواز لم يكن مطمئنا إليه وإن احتج له بمعض الشبهات العقلية فقد ذكر القولين وحجج الفريقين ومال في أغلب أجوبته إلى قول بالجواز وقد اشتهر عنه بالقول بالجواز وأخذ بذلك كثير من طلاب العلم وغيرهم تقليدا كما تقل كما تعلق به أصحاب الأهواء الذين لا يأخذون من أهل العلم إلا ما يوافق أهواءهم فعمة البلوى بهذا التصوير واستباحه أكثر الناس جهلا وتقليدا وهوا وهذا كله لا يضر الشيخ فهو علامة علامة مجتهد متحر للحق فأمره داير بين الأجر والأجرين إن شاء الله فإن المجتهد فإن المجتهد إن أصاب فلو أجران وإن أخطأ فلو أجر واحد so he mentions uh, what is, and you cannot absolutely ascribe that he sees it to be permissible, Sheikh Muhammad in the camera. Uh, and he mentions the reasons. Then he mentions the people regarding him who took the, his opinion, some of them out of taqlid, some of them are people who desires. They just take what from uh, the scholars. What, and this is the topic we're talking about. The reason why Sheikh Muhammad is using as a point against you, because it was clear from your behavior that you weren't really. Yeah, sincere from what's apparent of seeking the truth. You were just more like following your desires. And this is what the harshness of Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Barak is categorized the people regarding this. So this is where you fell. So he tried to put it as like the issue of Taswir. Yes, like we say that Sheikh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentioned, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Barak, he's Allah Mujtahid. He gets uh, between a one reward or two rewards. If he gets it right, he gets two rewards. If he's errors, he gets one reward. But as for people desires, it doesn't matter. They're just trying to say something that coincides with desires to fulfill something and use it against people that critique them. Merely, then that is not the case. And if that's not the case, so we'll continue, inshallah. An utter lie. The only ever debate that I took and was oh because apparently I said that it's okay to debate with the people of innovation. I don't know where he got that from. I will play the audio of Sheikh Abdul brothers and uh, compare it to what he's saying. An utter lie. The only ever debate that I took part in, right? It's back in 2015. The only ever debate. When did I ever say that you could go and debate, or it is for everyone to go and debate with anyone and everyone? Right. So this is the audio of Sheikh Abdul Hamid. We can hear for ourselves how Abu Taymiyyah misquotes him. Abu Taymiyyah al And bear in mind that Sheikh Abdul Hamid is the same Sheikh that Abu Taymiyyah used to promote and use him as a neutral Sheikh because he was from the Mashaykh that was somewhat uh, gentle with him, easygoing with him. 
So you're on his Twitter and different places, you promote Sheikh Abdul Habib. But now that Sheikh Abdul Hamid, after exhausting his efforts at advising him privately, he comes out and he wipes him under the ground like he was Ka'alam Yakun, someone that he was of a high standard stand, status to him. So he mentions that is someone that has deviated. He mentioned that his own sheikh was attesting to this, saying that he has become watered down, Abu Taymiyyah. So he said at the beginning it started with the tasweer, like the way how he, I won't play his old previous opinion, how Abu Taymiyyah used to speak about picture taking, and then later on, which shows you that it was not more like an academic way of just changing opinion. It was more like how the people of desires were, even the way he was speaking about it. So it was, from this point of view, not just anyone that holds that view and he's, uh, he's a Mumayya or something of that sort. That's not what the Sheikh is pointing at. And this is what he mentioned, the compromising and you know, reclining to Ahlul Bid'ah and sitting with them. And even be, and probably agreeing with them. And a man is upon the religion of his companion. And then he mentions, as for, he doesn't quote Abu Taymiyyah, he just says, as for uh, debating with the people of uh, innovations, absolutely, and that's not the way of the way of the Salaf. So you can see, and he, here he's mentioning that certain things of previous uh, incident of how the debate that he did and the, uh, the famous debate with Asrar Rashid, more harm came out than good. That more harm came out than good. And he knows of that. Well, like some people didn't know of Asrar Rashid until uh, they seen that video uh, and some of the shubhat that he had, some people on the comments got affected by it. And they weren't some of the times equipped to fully address every point. So in this public platform like that, <clears throat> it was more harm. And even things of like speakers' corners, that type of uh, debate, uh, even though perhaps uh, a person was surrounded by cameras and stuff, but we know that of how a person should do in those scenarios, that they should walk away, or else more harm is going to happen. Uh, and that's what, it, that's what happened. When they took these debates publicly, and more harm came. So this is the context. And sitting with the people of Ahl Bida, it's not from the way of the Salaf. and uh, this is the point that Sheikh's mentioning that if you were to do like how some of his other fellow brothers have been distinct tamayyuz Sheikh Mubu said man tasara da'watuna illa bi tamayyuz being distinct in your call perhaps you will see more khair and that's why and if you ask Abu Taymiyyah about his students that he produced 
where are the students that you produced uh, that could really benefit the community and really uh, bring up fruits and clarifying innovations from Sunnah and teaching the people in a correct manner. How many, where are the, all these students? And you could perhaps see that the other people who did the other way are producing more students and bringing up more khair and establishing something that can in the long term have a greater impact, inshallah. And this is what I mentioned to him in private, that when as for what the benefits of people, it stays longer and it benefits. So this is the advice that was given. And the Shaykh gave it in private, and unfortunately, he did it to it against the wall. So here's another thing that he mentioned in his recent video, I want to comment on. Who agree with them. Maybe they've changed now, Allah Allah, in the last two weeks or three weeks, Allah Allah. But what I know, right, you have to be in agreement on these issues that in reality are open for discussion, otherwise there's a problem. My and that's not true. Like anyone who knows us, and perhaps a person um, may see taswir, and I don't, and there's still some sort of cooperation of advice and da'wah. And this is not uh, like, as you mentioned, like Sheikh Salih Fawzan, uh, if he sees a particular view, and, and Sheikh Yaha sees a different view, that's why you see when they met, Sheikh Yaha visited him and they attended for Sheikh Abdul Abbad. Like, so to say this is incorrect. And he, this this type of generality, Abu Tamiya knows deep inside that this is not correct. My own Sheikh, Sheikh Nabil, who used to teach me Nahu, was dropped. And one of the reasons why they dropped him was simply because he took a different view to Sheikh Muqbil on the issue of how many khutbas should you have on Eid. The majority of the scholars, they say, it's two khutbas. You know, like you do in the Jum'ah. You sit and then you go up again. Sheikh so that's not correct, and, uh, merely because uh, he disagreed with Sheikh Mubil. Whoever was in Yemen will tell you the full story. Uh, this is, unfortunately, how sometimes Abu Taymiyyah, he doesn't give the full truth and tells things as they deserve to be told. And he wishes to, because he's using his platform uh, and he's to mislead uh, some of the listeners, so, assuming to what he wants of a narrative, pushing that. And he knows that, that he's doing this. Because if you really look into the scenarios, you would see that it wasn't because of these issues. Because there's many shiuch of great scholars that don't see the first Adan, and no one ever labeled them off or of that sort. And I'll play you an audio of Sheikh Mubil, of how he was himself regarding this topic. ما حكم الأذان الأول يوم الجمعة وهل يجوز متابعة المؤذن فيه؟ الحكم هو ما قاله عبد الله بن عمر كما في مصنف ابن أبي شيبة أنه قال في الأذان الأول يوم الجمعة إنه بدعة لكن من عمله إذا كان ليس من المبتدعة فلا نجرؤ أن نقول إنه مبتدع so here Sheikh Mubba was asked, he mentioned, yes, we believe what Ibn Umar mentioned about the first Adhan, that is innovation. And however, someone does it, and he's not from the people of innovation, we can not dare call him an innovator by that. <laughs> He said he means like someone that doesn't do the mawlid and doesn't innovate, he's not known for that. You know, we can't say this person is an innovator for doing the first adhan. So he mentions that Ibn Umar labeled the first Adhan as an innovation, but did not call Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu as an innovator. So it shows you the difference. And this is how the Mashaykh of Yemen were upon from the time Sheikh Mubil 
continue upon that, that if they had this view, they would not, just someone that uh, didn't hold that view, they cancel them out. So what here Abu Taymiyyah is mentioning is not correct. Sheikh Mubin had a view that you only do one, right? And they cause them problems. And likewise, having a second adhan, the way they do in the haram, is a fiqh related issue. Big issue they turn into this. And Sheikh Yahya was actually the one who, right, was pushing for this. This statement now of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, right, these five. My brothers and my sisters, I took this to the Sheikh when he was in Mecca. And I'll play you some audio regarding this from another clip, Abu Taymiyyah, that's from his YouTube channel, still available the audio, where he says some statements about this Adhan, first Adhan, we'll play it inshallah. Not everyone that falls into bid'ah becomes an innovator. And not everyone who falls into kufr, he becomes a kafir, as Imam bin Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned. The fact that some scholars say, and likewise Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, that um, Abdullah ibn Umar uh, said that Uthman ibn Affan uh, said, yani, uh, Uthman ibn Affan's adhan was a bid'ah, and they fell into it. It doesn't assist that he's an innovator. Sahabas make mistakes. They are not ma'soom. They're not infallible. Wadih. So uh, I hope these uh, matters are very well known. Rather, نحن نحب الصحابة ونجلهم ونجلهم. So let the people be aware of this. And uh, and my Sheikh does not believe that. Look where he is now. He's in Makkah. He got driven out of his home, and it was none other because of his defense and his love for the Sahab. You can see, he said, my Sheikh doesn't believe that, and he will test that. So for him to say now that all of a sudden. Uh, Sheikh uh, the Mashaykh there, they believe that someone that fell uh, and into the first Adhan is an innovator or that he's counseled like that, that's not correct. The Sahaba Ritwanullahi Alayhim and his Kutub Amar. So going back to the other audio, inshallah. He was in Makkah, I took this to Sheikh. I was like, yeah, Sheikh. I was like, Sheikh. I never got involved in these issues that happened between you and Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Adani who passed away, Allah yirhamu. That's not correct, but he did get involved. Uh, Abu Taymiyyah, you know, he has a 43-page PDF he wrote, titled Advice and Clarification of the Dangers that Dar sunnah are Treading Upon. And what has been mentioned regarding blind following or Bayla Jabiri or anyone, uh, or anyone besides him. So he has a part one and part two. It says, written by Abu Taymiyyah, Muhammad ibn Jailani al-Ba'lawi. So, and from what he mentions in here, yeah, he mentions statements that shows his involvement. That from the affairs of Ubaid are his Islamic verdicts, let alone his fanaticism towards Abdurrahman and Adani which is sufficient for one to see the dangers of his misguidance. Is involved or not involved, brothers? And you can see that Abu Taymiyyah is not 100% in terms of how he relates, brothers. He gives you uh, false narratives at times, sometimes half-truths, uh, tampers with context. So this is what uh, we're always advising Abu Taymiyyah with regarding a lot of the times, these affairs. And then he also says, also his persistence upon the awful and impulsive statements that have become apparent from him clearly demonstrates how hazardous and so on and so forth to one's dunya and akhirah. And he said, by Allah, by Allah, by Allah, it'd be corruption and oppression to keep quiet against these statements, fearing the general masses. So somebody didn't get involved, and he's, maybe you're fearing the general masses, of khalas. Look at the same as what he's saying. So you can see that how Abu Taymiyyah speaks and the reality at times is not so true. And it goes on in, in this PDF, he says, I didn't want to make it a long treatise since I'm not refuting Ubaid. I've only mentioned some of the misguidance of Ubaid al-Jabir in this advice to my Salafi brothers of Dar sunnah This to remind them that Ubaid al-Jabir is not someone to, be bl to blind follow and to make it clear the dangers of blind falling of such a person. He said, you're treading on fire. It is not worth to sacrifice your akhirah for this man, O oh my brothers. 
This man is contradicting the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So be aware of blind following anyone, whether it is Ubaid or Sheikh Rabi al Madkhali, Hafizahullah. So this is not involved. This is involved, brothers. Uh, and then he says, Ya Ma'ashara Daru Sunnah, or from his wordings, uh, page 7, you all know and recognize that Sheikh Rabia, may Allah grant him tawfiq, has absolutely no proof for what he stated at the very gathering you are present in. You are all witness to his allegations, which are baseless. They lack evidence on the day of reckoning. Did he mention a verse from the Quran, a hadith, or a consensus of the scholars that our Sheikh Yahya al Hajuri has opposed? And he, so he even mentions further that he, he can go back to it, probably share it, inshallah, just so the people can see. 43 page PDF. And then yet he says he wasn't involved. And just to show the truth, and in the Sheikh uh, because he kept saying, uh, Subsidiary issues, and we'll play that inshallah. What Sheikh says about differing and furo and snuff, if that makes a person an innovator, we'll play it so just so we can be fair and show that Abu Taymiyyah was not correct in what he is displaying about the Sheikh. Why is it that we were treating people who didn't want to get involved in such a harsh manner when you have Ibn Taymiyyah who gave all of these ethics and are already on the Sheikh and the Sheikh went quiet, didn't say a single word. Perhaps he went quiet because he's seen argumentative and you were known to be argumentative. You even argued one time in his house, in front of him, in his house. We were guests and you argued during the time of the telelink. It's not usually the Sheikh allows people to come to his house and you were argumentative. And it was known that you were argumentative during the Indomaj. And if there's some brothers there who are close that can witness to this and attest. And I said to him, Sheikh, look, when it comes to the issue of pictures and videos, I might see it to be impermissible, right? But then there's someone who graduates from Al-Medina who sees it to be permissible. Should we cooperate with him? He says to me, Taswir, at taswir muharram. Oh, it's haram. Taking pictures, haram. Then I began to realize that there is a fundamental issue. And what's wrong with his statement saying that it's haram? And, he, and he's mentioning, like there's some mashayikh like that, who don't see like the difference regarding this topic to be a, a difference of like uh, just ijtihad that you cannot critique the other about. That's why you find some of the major scholars, uh, they critique other scholars that come out of here and they're a bit stern in their tone, some of them. Uh, yes, they may yeah, in terms of ijtihad, but in terms of the action, they critique that action. And we'll play here with Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, uh, just so we give an example. Fadilat al-Sheikh, wafakakum Allah. Yaqul, hunaka kathirun min talabat al-ilmi yaqul, inna mas'alat al-tasweer hiya mas'alat khilafiyya. Kil shayya yal khilafi. Nakhna al-dalil ma'a man? Ma'a hadith al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullu musawwirin fi al-nar. So the Sheikh was asked about people who say that Taswir is a difference of opinion. So the Sheikh said, everything in there is a difference of opinion. But the proof is with who? Kullu musawwirin fi nar. Every picture taken is in the hellfire. So yeah, some Mashaykh, they may be a bit stern, uh, generally speaking, about this topic. Uh, that's their right to have that opinion. And if they can see it to be a major sin. And you yourself, Abu Taymiyyah, were like this. And why can you do it? And, and before, like, when you were doing this, no one called you that you had a fundamental issue, or you have issues in your usul, like what you're saying about Sheikh Yahya now. So let's play just examples of how you were. And it's become so easy to do, and at the same time you find that this is something very, very major. As for some of the doubts that are related to this issue, you find some people, they say... So he's calling it doubts, the other people's opinion, and how they justify picture-taking in the modern day. He's calling, he's referring to it as doubts. They say 
that the intended purpose by picture making or picture taking is what is drawn. As for these photos that a person does with his telephone or with his mobile phone, then this is not considered. Or it's not from the same chapter or anything like this. But if you were to look clearly inside the Sharia, in the legislation, you would find what? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited all types of pictures. And I'm going to bring something. So this is a clip from it. It's not found on his YouTube channel. He's teaching the book of Shaykh Al-Hayuri, al mubadi Nufida. It's still available on his YouTube channel. Him saying this. Uh, it was, I believe, uploaded uh, seven years ago on his YouTube channel. And here's another example of it too. And also some of the doubts, you find that people, they say that it should be used for da'wah purposes. Like in the affairs of the da'wah. Okay, for example, now if a scholar is speaking, in this case, the, he should be recorded, there's no problem with this. The reality is, when the scholar is speaking of knowledge, we are in need of his voice. Not in need of his face. His ilm is coming out of his voice, or out of his mouth, or his eyes. The answer is his mouth. And likewise, you find in some masajid, when the man is given a khutbah, you have a video in the woman's section. The women are looking at the khatib, the person that's given the khutbah. This alone can cause what? A big corruption. Imagine the woman now looks at this guy, or looks at the khatib, and she falls in love with him. Or she's thinking about him all day. She becomes maftoon, infatuated because she saw the khatib. The khatib would be good looking. And what happened to lowering the gaze? We have to be lowering our gaze at all times. Not only outside. Or it's permissible when the khatib is speaking, we can look at him, the answer is no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَفْصَارِهِمْ Tell the believing man to lower the gaze. And also he said in another ayah, tell the believing woman to lower her gaze. Because all these things, they lead to what? Bigger trials and bigger fitna, corruption. And if we look at it clearly, you find that everything goes back to this. So you can see like how he was and he was and now that if a particular sheikh upon his ijtihad was to be a bit stern because it comes in Kitab Tawheed Bab Maja'af al-Musawwirin and even in some of the chapters some scholars in that book Kitab Tawheed they mention the topic of videos so it shows you that some scholars they may be a bit stern Yes, uh, from one scholar to another, it can be his ijtihad, but the topic itself they're addressing, they may be a bit stern because they see it to be a major sin in their eyes. So how is this issues that have someone has fundamental issues, like you're saying about Sheikh that he has fundamental issues? For me, in Yemen, my brothers and sisters, we didn't lack in terms of resources to seek knowledge. The tools were there. 30 lessons opening up every week, but what we really lack is how to deal with people who differ with us on matters that are open for discussion. All right. The same uh, matter, I mean, that the way he was dealing with it, uh, people else were dealing with it. Why? Or is it okay for you then, but now when people else? All right. And what I just mentioned are examples of that. طيب, another thing, inshallah, we don't want to make it a little longer, but is another clip that he said in his recent uh, video. Right. From these issues, my brothers and my sisters, I think is worth mentioning. Right. Is when two people differ with regards to is he on the manhaj? Is he off the manhaj? Again, this is from the things that are, from the issues of ishtihad. This, my brothers and my sisters, has indeed caused 
a lot of discord in Al Yemen. I've lived there, my brothers and sisters. I was in Yemen for four years. Three years that I spent in the match. Right? There was issues between two sheikhs, Sheikh Yahya Al Hajuri and Sheikh Abdul Rahman Al Adani from Aden. Right? And they fell out. One of the sheikhs was saying, no, he's upon innovation and whatever have you, he's a Hizbi and whatever. Ila Right? What I want to mention is that there was a group of people who didn't want to get involved. And because they didn't want to get involved, they would be dealt in a very, very harsh way. I witnessed this in my own eyes. There was even a time that brothers got angry with me because I wasn't reading on these issues. I was busy memorizing the Quran. And the Quran is what benefited me now. These issues that happened between the sheikhs, did it really benefit anyone after coming back? So uh, that's not true. I mean, in terms of the, a lot of the people, there was a lot of people that didn't get involved, but they adhered to adjib manners in terms of markers, seeking knowledge. They didn't get involved with what's happening between the two. They were just seeking the knowledge, calm. Nothing happened of anything towards them. But there was people that tried to uh, make politics in the masjid about the view of the sheikh regarding another sheikh and tried to even like overthrow him and plan and plot and cause tahrish with the, the, the majis, the villagers, the local villagers who were like police there, and try to even cause division in the ranks. And if you disagree, you can't go to the furthest extent and cause fitna in the markets of the sheikh. Alhamdulillah, I have a series of the mentioning how this all started and the fitna clarified with true uh, resources in his audio. So this is how he's portraying it. It's not correct about it. Um, and uh, there's many people that were even teaching. There was, I even believe, uh, Ma'mar al-Qadisi. At that time, he was teaching al Mu'tamad al-Imla, his book that he wrote in Imla. Uh, he was teaching it while he was even someone that was not, had a stance with the two, and it was known. But later on, if someone shows that he's yani, uh, causing fitna with his words or trying to like cause division within the Marquez, and try to belittle the sheikh about his statements. And then that's a student knowledge doesn't have manners. For example, that, that, that type of student may be dealt with differently. So please mention things that they deserve to be mentioned, brother. Yes, if someone, I mean, afraad, someone individually, does some extremism on his own, you cannot put that on all everyone else that went to Yemen and say they're accountable for that person's action. Over these issues, people would get boycotted. People would get uh, would go through uh, difficulties and hardships. And then later on, and he said himself, and he himself used to write. But as you can see, that forty-three pages of a PDF. You can imagine how much time was put into that. And he said he didn't get involved. He got involved, and perhaps uh, what benefited people later on is to learn uh, the importance of. Yeah, and you knowing who you take your religion from, and there's so much things that can be benefited from. From my brothers and my sisters. Huh? Later on. The second biggest sheikh, right? The second biggest sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hizam, was boycotted because he retracted the position that his fellow Damagians had pertaining to some of the other ulama of Yemen. As Sheikh Yahya, by himself and then you had all of these other scholars who sided with the other sheikh and would say that Sheikh Yahya was actually incorrect right Sheikh Muhammad bin Hizam was part of this camp later on he decided to retract the negative things that he said about all of these mashayikh on the other side of the scale and guess what happened my brothers and my sisters boycotted called an, uh, a mutamayya someone who was watered down just because he decided to retract Right, and other. So, yeah, uh, hear about this. I want to highlight this part about Sheikh Muhammad Izam. Once again, uh, he doesn't give full stories. Sheikh Muhammad Izam, the uh, thing would happen with him was when we left the Maj and Alhamdulillah, the Marquis that he got in Ib in the city. 
Shekhar helped him uh, get that markiv, and it was supposed to be written under Shekhar's name, but he ended up putting on his own name. Alhamdulillah, Shekhar was still uh, didn't do anything. And the main thing is da'wah, it's not about those names. But that behavior was wrong in itself right away. And then also, uh, he started to show this uh, strange behavior to Shekhar. Like Shekhar, when he came to visit uh, Ib, he didn't go to him. Like totally like, and he would even publicly speak about Shekhar. There's an audio where he mentioned Shekhar publicly talking about him. That he didn't support him against some students that he had issues with in his markiz. And his brother, I mean, the Shaykh personally is an olive in Mecca. And when he came back, he was busy with so much affairs. He, he gave you someone that was in the area to judge and look into further. So just because he has, he has to come automatically support you, and if not, then you speak about him publicly? That's not a way how a student deals with his teacher. So then he, Muhammad Izam removed like uh, the taqdeem, the preface, the, any, like the introduction that Shaykh gave to Shaykh Muhammad Izam in his book. He removed it. And he was showing this behavior, and he was always like indirectly throwing low blows to Sheikh Yahya and causing friction with his own students, to making them dislike Sheikh Yahya and saying people like someone like the other scholars. And all of this was happening. And Sheikh Yahya was still patient, and people were going to Sheikh Yahya saying, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Islam is doing this, he's doing this. Sheikh Yahya has to be patient, advise, and Jalla be gentle. And Muhammad Islam was doing the opposite. And so people were contacting him in private, trying to advise him, Sheikh Muhammad Zama of his behavior, and he would come up with audios, audios. The mashayikh, they need to be supportive of me against any student that caused me problems. It's not like that. So if a student is in your market is causing you problems, sometimes it needs to be looked into. What are the issues? Maybe you're doing something wrong sometimes to the students. How many students are complaining? There are so many students. To the point that his whole team left, like the, I think the Mu'addin, everybody just all packed up and just left, and his markets became like half empty. So I don't even think up until now, Sheikh spoke about him publicly. So him just recanting was in the aftermath of it. It really happened. It was already, he was just showing enmity towards Sheikh Yahya and everything. So um, get your facts straight. And then even him retracting, that's wrong. Like, why would he retract when he wrote something with points saying that I didn't need this to be his B and I feel like, and I'll play audio. Because, you know, if they, either these people recanted or either you recanted. It can't be like, unless there's something you said was wrong, you have to prove that you said what's wrong. <laughs> Okay, he says about uh, the Mashaykh of uh, the Ibana, they have innovated principles with them in their book. So the question lies, it is, and did they recant? Or, like, or did you error? Like, well, you have to clarify that. That's why the pressure was on him. And he says about them, they have hizbiyah with him by his partisanship. Sheikh Muhammad Izzam is saying this. And he wrote stuff in detail. They have, they're watered down. And they, you know, they have a number of principles that oppose the manhaj of Salaf al for you to recant after all saying this, you have to make something clear cut. You know, you can't. You have to say I was a liar, or I, if I said something wrong. People will not accept this, or else people are just going to say you just recanted because you were, had some issues with your sheikh, sheikh, and you felt like you needed someone to help you because everybody left you. Just say it like that, and that's what people will make things clear. <laughs>
And he must become Adil Mashwari. And he's someone that was with Shah Hamzab, but end up joining them. He says he's to become Hezbi with them. And for you to say that, and it's overnight, everything changes, like, you need to make a clarification. So this was the criticism on him. So Abu Taymiyyah is not giving you the full truth, brothers. And whoever wants to go, go back to their audios and see how Muhammad is done with his language and how he's speaking, about his own sheikh. Because Sheikh he even said, you can go back to his website, you know, when he was with the Mashaikh of Yemen, he said about solar rectification between us, he said, I give two conditions. The Sheikh Muhammad Imam recants from the book, al because there's some innovative principles there. Jumla tama tafsila. Crants from it. And also that we don't differ about Sheikh Abdul Hamid al-Adini. He says, I seem to be his, but you guys don't. Yeah, you know, let's... So this shows you that the problem was from them. The fact that Sheikh Ayyad is in they want to force Sheikh Ayyad to adopt to his, their opinion. That he's not his bee. And they're willing to cause all this fitna just for that. So who was the one really dividing? And Abu Taymiyyah knows all these facts. And he was there. He's, this is just, he's just giving you a biased narrative. I don't know what's the drive, but this is scary. We're going to be asked in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way he puts Sheikh is as if Sheikh uh, just sees, like in any subsidiary issue of furu'a, you're automatic innovator, you fell into error. It's not true. He says what Shatabi says, if you do agraq al mukhalafa, you do excessive opposition, constantly opposing the sunnah of the Prophet, even in the furu'a, and you do so much of it, and you're, you're, it becomes you, that affair then that is where a person could leave the fold of the sunnah. So it's not, and we'll play the audio for the sheikh, for, uh, for everyone. so you can see in the words of the sheikh and he himself has an audio we translate not everyone that falls into a bid'a or or and is a muqtadiyah or not everyone that disagrees with uh, you ruling on tabdiyah you become an innovator and he clarified this is an audio so why are you generalizing brother and don't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah al Mawid, brother, we're going to wa in Allah in front of Allah, the people in dispute are gonna meet. You're going to be asked about these words that you said about someone, even if you could have restricted your words and changed your but you this is especially about your own Shaykh, you're misquoting and lying about him. La hawla wa la illa billah. So this is it in a nutshell. We wanted to end with this. Uh, and people who want, they can go back to the certain things, detailed, written in our channel, and also attach below, because he brought some statements of Sheikh Islam al Taymiyyah and other scholars. But what the habit of Abu Taymiyyah is that he takes from the statements of Abu Taymiyyah that coincides for him, and these are other statements that further explain. So what the scholars do regarding the speech of Mutamiya is they take his speech as a whole. They take his other speech that clarifies and the other speech and they put in context and they clarify. Shaykh Mutamiya is referred to certain affairs. So alhamdulillah, I touch below on this video a uh, response and a clarification to some of these things that uh, Mutamiya uh, did generally without mentioning his name, but just addressing the mistake. Uh, so you can listen to it for yourself and we read the speech of Abu Taymiyyah and also the other scholars, how they understood it. Because the problem with Abu Taymiyyah, if he were to just take a lot of these matters that he's differing it back to the ulama, they will explain to him these words of Abu Taymiyyah. They will explain to him and say, show his actions and say, this is not what Abu Taymiyyah is referring to. And they will take their own fatah these scholars and say, no, we're not, we don't mean what you're doing. But Abu Taymiyyah wishes to take these statements and just present it, put it all on YouTube without confirming with the scholars of his content. And that's the problem where more harm comes than good. 
So we don't want to take too much of your time. We know we're all busy with duruses here in classes. So this is just something, quick clarification that was needed. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha 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 